this is the weirdest Holy Week ever. I, I, this is just so different and not how we do it. Uh, not how we've always done it. You know, churches are really, really good about knowing how we've always done something. And there's basically nobody uh, in a church anywhere doing Palm Sunday like we always do it, I think. Um, I know there are some churches who are getting reported on <coughs> across the news for doing, um, trying, you know, continuing to meet when that's obviously dangerous. And um, uh, so I guess some people are pretty determined to do it like they've always done it, but we are doing this very differently and it feels very weird. It feels very strange to me. Um, I can already tell there's going to be some days where I get stuck in that spot in my head that Holy Week is supposed to be experienced in a particular way. Um, and, uh, and uh, this, that's not what we're doing. It's the weirdest Palm Sunday, the weirdest Holy Week ever. I sort of think maybe we should put a plaque up in the sanctuary to mark it when we get to go back to the church and see our plaques again. Uh, but I want to say how grateful I am for all of your willingness to try these new things, to be patient as I learn them, uh, for all of us, you know, struggling with this together, for Cheryl agreeing to do this and then it going wrong and being great about it. I mean, that's really a remarkable thing as a community to pull together in this way. And um, I feel so blessed for your willingness and your assistance. Um, we've come together to continue to do Bible study, which, by the way, has been great uh, at, on Zoom. I'm not sure I want to go back to the old way just yet, even if we could. And I uh, am delighted to be able to see so many folks during the happy hour. And all of your participation in those things is just a, a blessing to me in these challenging days. Even though it is officially the weirdest uh, Palm Sunday, the weirdest Holy Week ever, we have read a very familiar text. We've read a story that if you've been around churches for about half a second, you've likely heard before. Um, because it's in all four of the Gospels in one form or another. The triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which is sort of the shorthand for uh, what happens today, what we mark today, uh, and what this scripture references. The triumphal entry into Jerusalem is reported, recorded in all four of the Gospels. There's not a lot of events that are recorded in all four, but this is one of them. And it's always how we enter into the space that we call Holy Week, the sacredest of weeks, the, the, the week of intense uh, thoughtfulness and awareness and, and high preparation for Easter. To, in order to get to Easter, you have to go through the hard stuff. You have to, you have to uh, be prepared to think and process and experience once again the passion of Jesus. And this marks our entry into that emotional space. Even though we're not doing this together uh, in a physical space, there is an emotional space that is Holy Week. There is a sacred space that is Holy Week. Uh, there is a mystical space that is Holy Week, and we get to do that together. But we're doing it without palms. Now, I don't know, uh, Stan's in Los Angeles. Maybe Stan has palms. Maybe Stan was able to go out and get some palms. But most of us do not have palms. I have no palms here. It's a palmless Palm Sunday. Uh, but if you were noting in the text a couple of things, first of all, it doesn't say that they were palm branches. The branches it references are just some branches people went and got. Uh, only John, uh, only John's gospel identifies the branches as palm branches. So uh, you'd be actually totally down with the synoptics if you ran out somewhere and just cut down any branches from a tree. You'd be, you'd be totally in accordance with, with what was reported in the synoptic gospel. So that would A, be fine. But B, you'll also hopefully have noticed that it wasn't just palm branches that people laid. It was cloaks. It's in um, uh, verse 8. Uh, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. So a cloak is an outer garment. It, it's outerwear. It's uh, kind of like 
a coat, uh, but it's usually more cape-like, but, but it's outerwear. And you definitely have some of that. So if you were feeling a real longing for replicating something about Palm Sunday, you would be t entirely justified to run over, grab a coat laid on the, on the ground. Um, there's more than one way to mark the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And we have traditionally used palms um, and shouted Hosanna, but you can lay a cloak down or a coat or even a scarf, I would say is fine um, and say Hosanna and still mark uh, what's happening here and what we are um, thinking about when we read the scripture and gather together on this day. Because it's about honoring Jesus. It's about acknowledging the authority of Jesus. Uh, Jesus comes in on a humble donkey, not a war horse. Uh, but even in that humility, the crowd acknowledges his authority and their uh, respect and honor of him. That's, that's what the day and that moment and that entry is about. What it's really about is praising Jesus and honoring Jesus and acknowledging Jesus and, and, and um, submitting uh, ourselves unto the authority of Jesus, recognizing that his authority throughout this week is not going to look like the authorities of princes and principalities uh, that the world usually recognizes and acknowledges. And some of what th this day is about is sort of um, getting ready and preparing to live under all of the complexities of this holy week. Um, there's, there's, there's a, a lot of, that's painful and there's a lot that's beautiful and, and, and it's the, the same week where we uh, are gifted with communion and then also hear about the crucifixion of Jesus and all of those are pieces in the week that we prepare ourselves with today. And I think what really matters is not so much that we didn't have palms, but that we put ourselves in a place where we're prepared to process and think about and wrestle with all of the complexity of this week. The folks who gathered around Jesus at that triumphal entry into Jerusalem, they used what was on hand. Palm branches were on hand. Um, and if there's anything that rings true to you and I right now, it's using what's on hand, using what's available, making do, getting by, making it work. I suspect you're doing all sorts of that this week. You don't have the right spice for a recipe and so you're using something else. Uh, you you uh, don't have something you'd like to, uh, to, to use and you can't find that brand in the rare instances you're able to, to get something. And so you're picking another brand. Uh, you're going to church <laughs> via your computer and you're working uh, using Zoom and uh, you're perhaps trying to corral children and uh, make them have a positive and meaningful and yet uh, hopefully learn something as well. So we're all using what's on hand. And that is no different than those who chose to respect and honor and, and, and lay palm branches and cloaks at the feet of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem as a sign of honor and respect. And we can use what's at hand as we enter this period and this experience of Holy Week together. Even as we have all of us that impulse of what's supposed to be happening, what we're supposed to be doing. Instead of getting stuck there, I wanna suggest that each of us approach this week and this whole experience, um, and in particular Easter, less focused on what is supposed to happen and more focused on what's possible. What is at hand? What can we use? How can we make do? And how do we together make it work? There is a thought that crosses my mind a lot these days. And um, there's no sense trying to put new wine in 
to old wineskins. So we're going to get ourselves some new wineskins for these, these moments and these experiences of church and focus less on what we would do if we were in the sanctuary and how we've always done it and what we're used to doing and focus on what's possible and how we can make something remarkable in these days. Holy Week is about marking and paying attention to these sacred days and these sacred stories and this sacred experiences. So I want to invite you to make room in your already crowded and busy and, and more complicated than ever life for the next several days. Uh, create a space in your mind, create a space in your heart, carve out a little time so that you can mark these days, even without the traditional markers that you're used to having, those signposts uh, that, that we are uh, comfortable with and, and already know about. The, you're not going to get the palm signpost today, so what signposts can you reach for that will make it happen for you? What counts is that we are authentic in this space and time. What counts is that we um, are sincere in this space and time. We can do this without palm branches. We can't do it without being sincere and really allowing ourselves to enter in mentally and spiritually into these days, marking these sacred days somehow, some way. Verse 10 in the scripture shell read just a little while ago says that the whole city was in turmoil. Well, that sounds about right. Some of you are in other places, but for those of us who are still in um, the city, it's rough. People are scared and, and some people don't know how far apart six feet is and it's just all kinds of stuff. Cities in turmoil sounds about right. Perhaps there is a lesson for us that we might have missed in other years in some of these stories and in some of these weeks. So much, I think, if we stop and pay attention each day during Holy Week will teach us something new that we would not have seen or heard or felt in ordinary times. And that will be a gift to us, I believe, if we let it. It will feel odd and strange and foreign and not right and not like Holy Week and not like Monday Thursday and not like Good Friday and not like Easter. And we could focus on that if we chose, but we can instead focus on the ways we're making these days sacred and holy in entirely new ways. I'm reminded of the Wendell Berry quote where he said, um, there are no unsacred places. There are only sacred places and desecrated places. And so whatever space you can find in your heart, in your mind, in your home, in these holy days, I invite you to stop and pay attention to Holy Week. That you might be made holy as well. Wherever you find yourself, I pray for you, holy days, sacred days, and an opportunity to experience these familiar stories in remarkably and entirely new ways that you and I might be remade as new people, that we might find a blessing in it for ourselves and be created to be a blessing to one another. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.